Good evening, PIC. I can't hear you. Come on. Good evening, PIC. Good evening. Come on, I can't hear you. Good evening, Church of God. Evening. You can't even lift the roof of PIC. Good evening. Whatever. Okay. I was asking God, Lord, you have a strong force in the Adventist church. You know why? Because the young people in this church is a strong force in the hands of God if and only if they have the mission which God himself gave them. Do you believe young people like you, like you and me, I should say, I should include myself, you know. Do you believe that you have a mission in this world? Come on, I am asking to the Adventist young people who have the mission in Christ. Do you believe that you have a mission in Christ? I praise God. Praise God because this group of young people is well directed by a mission. I was trying to scan through my Bible and searching for a particular story that will best reflect tonight's message. And uh, I came across to this message I call the Raven Mission An Authentic Quest. Some of you might have heard this. I shared this one in Sampagita. I shared this one also to the lamp. I think some young people coming from the Mulavi Hall heard this one. But I'd like to share this one to the whole community. If you heard this one, think more and you will see and find some games here. And if you have not heard this message yet, buckle your seatbelt. Let's all together learn. From the, feet of, from the feet of Christ. We are going to open the Holy Scriptures from, first, from the book First Kings. Follow with me, young people who have the mission. This is where you can find the detailed instruction. Come with me in the First King, 17th chapter, that is verses 4 to 6. And yes, for us to best understand the scriptures, let us invite and welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Loving God in heaven, tonight we want to know more about you. Oh Lord, show us thine way and show to us thy goodness. Loving Father, we want to know a little bit more about the mission that you gave us. I pray, dear God, that you will speak to our hearts, open our minds, and as we open the scriptures, may you enlighten our minds, O Lord. Thank you for blessing us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In verse 4 of the 17th chapter of 1 King, it says, God talking to Elijah, saying, You will drink from the brook Kerith Ravine. So this is the story. Uh, Brother Elijah, who was sent by God in a mission, after performing his mission to the king, very straightforward, after he went there to the, to the, to the castle, he delivered the message for the king, and without spending idleness, before the presence of the king, he left. And right there, before he goes out of, of the castle, the word of God came to him saying, Brother Elijah, you are not to go somewhere else. You are going to go in this place because I have prepared for you there. The word of the Lord came to Elijah, says, live here. Turn eastward and hide in the Kerit Ravine, east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook and I have ordered the ravens to feed you there. 
thank you very much for this quote. Okay. If you are Brother Elijah, hearing this word, does it ring a bell? You don't get it, do you? I have sent. I am reading, I think that is in verse 4. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Wait a minute. Brother Elijah was a faithful reader of the scripture. He must have been thinking, what? The ravens was sent to feed me? Must, while I was reading this one, I was trying to search something new. Lord, what is in this story? Why the raven has to appear here? It says there, I have commanded the ravens. And I would like to sidetrack a little. I want to take your attention in Genesis chapter 8. Let's open our Bibles. Genesis chapter 8, verse 7. This is the time when Brother Noah sent a bird on a mission. And what bird is that? Raven. The same bird sent for a mission and this time, this is what happened. Brother Noah sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up, turned from off the earth. The purpose why the raven was sent there is to to affirm if the, the, the earth is dry. But lo and behold, this particular bird was sent for a mission but did not return to accomplish it. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. That the ravens could have made a good start when it was sent during its first mission. But it failed. Out of my curiosity to know what the feedback of the crowd, I tried to ask people and crowd or young people. I, I asked them, whenever you hear the word or whenever you hear raven, what comes first to your mind? I, I found several answers, very common. And this is what they found. This is what they respond, responded me. They said, oh, it's black. Yeah, it's black. Huh, I put it white. Because I want to tell you today, brothers and sisters, that the color of that raven has nothing to do to the accomplishing of its mission. It produces an ugly sound. Maybe AUP community is... A music people, so they don't like it. It reminds me of Noah and uh, Elijah. These are the common answers I received when I was uh, searching. If what is the first thing that comes in your mind whenever you hear Raven? So let's go forward. This animal, Raven was given an important mission. I was thinking, Father God, whenever I read the scriptures, I find several times when human beings is likened to an animal. If somebody tells you you're a peacock, oh, in the form of literature nowadays, what does it mean? You're proud. You have the beauty. Peacock. Whenever someone tells you, oh, you are a parrot. What does it mean? You talk a lot. <laughs> what else? If someone tells you you are a chicken, what does it mean? Come on, come on. I need feedback. Whenever somebody tells you, ah, oh, you are a chicken, whatever. <laughs> they say, oh, you are not focused. You get, you know, you get distracted easily. If someone, oh, you're an eagle. 
Oh, it has a one it has a good connotation, right? Whenever someone tells you, Oh, you are an eagle, you soar high. Oh, eagle has a good uh, I should say attachment in terms of character. Whenever human beings is attached there. So it means you know, splendid uh I should say splendid uh, characteristics. They say much on this eagle. But tonight, I want you to know that whenever they call you raven, because of what happened in the past to these ravens, we have a very different connotation to them. But let me tell you today, brothers and sisters, that even though they failed during their first mission, God trusted them and sent them to perform a mission during the most complicated circumstance. During the time when only one, brother Elijah, doing the work of the Lord, he was alone because the rest of the prophets was, were hidden. And so there is none that God can, can use in dispense to support his ministry. We find, he, find, he found the ravens able to do the mission. I'd like to continue for in the reading for in ver, um, first in the verse that we have. In the first king, please follow me back there. Chapter 17, verse 5. No, 6. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening and drank of the brook. Do you know why the raven failed during its first mission? Do you know? It found its weakest point. While the raven was flying, hovering in the land, nakita niya yung weakest point niya. Alam niyo kung It's the decaying body. It is the meat. The decaying body was scattered all over the land. And Nakalimutan niya yung mission niya. I was thinking, while I was reflecting on this message, I said, Father God, you have given us a very important mission in this world. But sometimes, because of what we see around us, we lose track of the mission that we have. I want you to notice that between the two missions, it has a difference. The first mission was given by man, Noah. And the second mission was given by God. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you today, in whatever ministry you are, and whatever mission you may be taking today, I want you to know that it is God who sent you. Not anybody else. It is the difference, brothers and sisters, that whenever God calls, it is for sure that He will always be there to sustain you. The ravens have to fly certain distance across the desert before it can reach Karit Ravine. And I was thinking how they persistently did it. The achieving, the achieving of the mission. You see, it says there in verse 6, And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and it also brought bre bread and meat in the evening, twice a day. And how, month, how many months did it last? It? I was trying to search through the writings of Ellen G. White, and I found out it is approximately three months solid day and night. Day and night, the ravens was able to perform their duty. And this is not any other kind of duty. You know why? Because it is carrying along its beak. It's what? It's weakest point. Do you remember? A while ago, when 
it was sent, when the raven was sent for a mission after the flood, it saw the decaying body around. Hop in, get here, one here, get another there, a food for it. And then, nawili na siya, nakalimutan niya na nababalik pa pala siya. But this time, because the ravens know that the mission given to them was from God, they faithfully did it. It is, I should say, a revival for the ravens. Do you think so? Imagine mo, bit 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 ng nila. Along the beak, the meat and the bread. All of these are the weakest point that this bird has. But I tell you, brothers and sisters, yes, you may have weaknesses, weak points, carrying along your hands. But I want to tell you, if you understand that the mission that you are carrying in this world is of God, you will give extra effort to preserve the mission was give, which was given you. I want you to know a while ago I told you that the color of the raven has nothing to do in the accomplishing of its, of its mission. So I was trying to say there is that anything especially in your physical appearance, don't make it an excuse so that you don't serve God. Sometimes we make it an excuse. I'm not good looking. Uh, I'm not good at that. Give it to others. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that such has nothing to do in the accomplishing of your mission. There is nothing in this world you see, the raven has fallen. The human tendency is that the moment you fall today, you fell today, it's going to be very hard to trust you again to, you know, to, to give him another thing to do. This is very hard, especially if our heart is not submitted to God. Whenever someone failed, it's going to be very hard to give him another mission to do because he has fallen there. But you see, guys, this loving God knows that He can tell something to His people in the last days only through this bird. This bird has fallen, yet God sends it once more for another mission. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you today, yes, you have to accept it. You have fallen. I have fallen. All of us have fallen. But God, take us up. Sacred duty. I notice that garbage is very hard to maintain, especially in the dormitories. Garbage? I could hardly see. I mean, I could I could sympathize with the monitors who would follow up all the garbages along the line. But I would like to encourage you to. Make something new on that. I want you to know that God is the greatest garbage picker. You know why? He picked you and me. Garbage. Who have fallen, yet God chose you to do a sacred mission. Thus, I believe that there exists today a generation of young people Bible-based, mission-driven, and are very supportive to the church. I believe that in these last days, there exist those who have the passion to work like Paul, those who have the humility of Mary, those who want to serve like Jesus Christ, who have the passion for souls. Brothers and sisters, you have a mission in this world. Better don't go blind of it. There exists today a generation. I will leave you three points. First, not necessarily points. These are lessons that I have learned. Accept the mission regardless of your past downfall experiences. 
The ravens have its downfall. You and me, brothers and sisters, whether you like it or not, we have downfalls. Some of them moral downfall. Some of them, you know, we have fallen. Some downfall experiences. But let me tell you something, guys. What looks, whenever God looks at you, he never, he never sees your downfall. He sees the potential that you can still do. This is what I believe. Because we have a God who sees potentials, not downfall experiences. Second, drop not the baton of responsibility given you by God. I was thinking very hard. This raven flying several miles away, carrying along its beak the very weakest point it has, he can just simply drop it or swallow it for himself. Do you believe so? He can. He can just simply spew it out of, his, of its mouth and even swallow it for itself. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, never ever drop the baton of responsibility. God entrusted you. While I was reading, wow, the raven speak to me this deep. You see, this is how I see, this is, this is how beautiful the Bible is. Whenever you read it, oh, it gives you wider perspective. And so now, God through the bird in these scriptures is telling me, do not drop the baton of responsibility. Hawk. Otherwise, it will be detrimental to the mission of the church, to the mission that I have given you. And lastly, stay focused. Press forward in God's hands. You know what happened during the time when this bird first fell? They lose their focus. Brothers and sisters, especially to our young ladies and young men. Young ladies, if you saw Pinocchio, never, never lose focus. Whenever someone, namely Pinocchio, come along and tell you about a raven relationship, tell him, sorry, at this time, I am in a raven mission sent by God. I am in a raven mission. Whenever someone takes you to the group that will not lead you to God, tell them in their face, Brother, I am in a raven mission set by God. I will not let anything hinder me. Stay focused. Press forward. I was thinking, did Jesus speak about ravens? Yes, he did. From all the birds, I was thinking, Lord, you could have spoken something about the eagles, about any other birds. But other than the false, he spoke about the ravens. I want you to open your Bibles with me in Luke chapter 12, verse 24. You can find there, Jesus Christ is speaking something about the ravens. And making it as an example, it says there in the, verse, in the 24th verse, consider the ravens. Imagine he, while he was speaking, he paused for a while. He said, hey, I want you to focus something to something. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or rip they have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. Do you believe so, brothers and sisters, that in this last generation, our young people who are sent in a raven mission is being fed by God spiritually, physically, mentally, and all of this talitali? I believe so. That the God who sent us into a mission will provide and sustain the mission.
how much more valuable you are more than birds. Christ regards a bird or that raven as an example. But he is trying to tell it would be a greatest example in this world to see a human being, a young people like you and me, brothers and sisters, focused to the mission, not just being a bird. Not just flopping, 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 and you know, going to and fro and without direction. Focus, stay focused, be on your direction. You have come to this university primarily to know your Savior. Again, I would like to repeat that. You have come to this university primarily to know your Savior. Second is for your diploma. Because I believe and I have proven that my coming in this university, I have known my Savior. I could just but praise God for whatever He has done to me. But I want you to know that God wants to do something to your life. Something unique. Whatever it may be, I don't know. But I know it is a mission given 